about uh, drums and the kind of drums I play and the zilzin cymbals. So uh, before we start, I'll just play a couple of tracks. Hope you guys like it. Cheers.
Chuck. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a track called Sight. Uh, it's been produced by uh, my friend in UK. His name is Kaz. And uh, it's one, one of the tracks from his album called Sight. Uh, the next one I'm going to play is a track called All of You. You might uh, have seen a video on YouTube. I'd post like a drum cover. So that's the second one I'm going to play. Thanks.
Uh, can we have some light on the people as well? Yeah. Uh, so that was all of you. And uh, before we start, uh, I want to keep this very interactive. And you know, I want to know what you guys think about uh, drums and also b your experiences and stuff. And I'll share mine. Uh, I like to uh, tell you more about the kit I play to start off. I'm using Pearl drums. This is the Pearl reference series uh, drum kit. 22-inch uh, bass drum, 10, 12, 14, 16. And uh, this is the 14 by 6.5 reference snare drum. This is the 10-inch piccolo. You guys will hear this uh, soon as well. Uh, so that's the, the drums that I endorse and I, I, I play. With cymbals, uh, there are a mix of K's and A's that I've uh, got. Uh, to start off with, this is the 15-inch Everest hi-hats. These are the new hi-hats which have just come out. And uh, I've always used 14-inch hats uh, you know, pretty much all, all, all my life. And this is the recently I've uh, started using 15-inch. And uh, I really kind of love the sound of this and just the right amount of crispness and you know high uh, the mids. Uh, so this is the 15-inch Everest. This I'm using a stack here, which is a 12-inch spiral with a 14-inch a, a uh, K crash. This is the 10-inch A custom splash, the Oriental splash, and the K hybrid. Uh, 16-inch uh, custom crash. This is the recent one that I've picked up from the, uh, the Zin factory when I went. Uh, it's the custom medium right, 22-inch. And uh, the Zilzian A custom EFX, 16-inch with a 6-inch splash. I use a lot of splashes. Uh, also, people who have been following me always hear a lot of cymbal work in, in, in my film work and you know in my songs. I really kind of love these 6-inch uh, splash, and I use them a lot. So. Yeah, uh, these are the uh, A custom EFX. This is again a stack that I'm using with uh, a 12 inch EFX over a Oriental China. It sounds great, it's like a nice trashy sound you get. And uh, this is the 16 inch Zilzian Oriental China. And uh, this is the spiral. Uh, very, uh, like, I use a lot on during background scores and, like, you know, a lot of other um, studio sessions. So this is a very handy one to have it. So uh, this is mainly my Zildjian setup, and I'm using the Roland SPD-SX for all my tracks and triggering samples and stuff. Uh, it kind of works really well for all my pop gigs, and you know, it has a 2 GB card, so it can you can put down like around 20 songs. So this is pretty much about the kit, and uh, so how many drummers in in in, in the crowd right now? Most of them. OK. Uh, can we have a mic uh, out there also so we can kind of have a little bit of interaction with them? So I also actually, before I, because we have a limited time of an hour, so I wanted to know what you guys want to know that I can share with you. Because there's a lot of things that involved in drumming, whether it's taking its independence, uh, Dynamics, we, you know, a lot of uh, like tuning part of it. There are a lot of questions that normally people ask me. So we have, we just have one hour. So I wanted to make it very crisp so that I, I can answer what you guys, you know, you're looking at uh, for. So anybody wants to start with any kind of questions that you guys a query that you want to ask me or something like that? You have a mic. Polyrhythms, uh, uh, I do a lot of, uh, when I normally practice, I use uh, the, the samba pattern, which is like, and try to do a lot of claves and stuff over, over that too, you know, and uh, try to build my independence over, over, over that part of it. So that's, that's why I've been practicing a lot of that. I, I can show you some stuff.
kind of patterns that I practice to build my independence. And also, I practice my vegan limbs to go to the office. You know, just keeping a, a basic time and keeping my focus on that. Sure, yeah. So I basically, uh, whenever I practice in my studio, I basically see that I mainly go through all the rudiments. I think uh, that's very important for everyone who's starting. How many are beginners and how many are like more into advanced drumming? How many are beginners? So let's start with that. Okay. So first to you guys, uh, when you kind of practice in at, at whatever place you have, first of all, practice on a metronome. You know, always uh, before any any exercise you start, always see that the you kick off the metronome, put it in your headphones or whatever you guys comfortable with. And um, all your basic rudiments, starting from single strokes, double strokes, triplets, parallels, flams, and you know all the rhythm cues and whatever all those things that are there. Uh, always see that you practice on metronome and uh, start off on a very slow tempo at uh, something like around 60, 70, and then kind of start building up to 80, 90, 100, and how much ever you can push. Also, uh, see to it that you do it on different, different, uh, 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 like, um, I, I'll just take, I'll show you a, a thing of double strokes on uh, different, different uh, tempos that I, I kind of do it and I make a triplet and double the, of that and, and uh, you know, the mainly all, all kinds of different tempos on, on, on double strokes. Uh, so basically, uh, the basic rudiments are very important. That's uh, uh, one of my teachers when I when I started off. Uh, his name is Pankaj Sharma. He was a very strict teacher, and uh, and he used to really like you know see to it that I do my rudiments every day. And uh, so he used to always just keep the metronome on, and I used to practice for like two two three hours continuously, just taking one one particular rudiment. Either you know one day I'll take single strokes, second day I'll take double strokes, and and uh, also, uh, he taught me that uh, holding the stick is very important because uh, first, when I started playing double strokes, uh, I used to always play both the strokes, you know, power both the strokes. But uh, 
he taught me the thing of uh, using the bounce of the stick, which is, you know, at, at a speed where if you have to play really fast, then the bounce, uh, if you don't have the bounce, then it, it's going to be very difficult. If you use your arm, it's going to be very difficult. So play it from the wrist. And uh, also getting the right balance of the stick is very important. Uh, if you're using a Wickforth, any any stick, um, uh, you will normally get the, the balance point at the at the flag, uh, where the flag is. If you use, if you put it in the front, then it, it's not going to bounce, nor it at the back. So if you get the right balance point, that's where you kind of will get the right bounce. And you need to keep it very loose. And let the stick bounce as much as it. Obviously, it has to be controlled. It can't be like, it can't be this. So that's why a lot of people ask me about double strokes, that, you know, how do you play that? And uh, I'll just show you a small thing on that. So yeah, basic rudiments, stick technique, very important, let it bounce. And uh, yeah, also have the right pa posture, like when you sit on the kid, see to it that your, you know, both your legs are at a good uh, angle and it's comfortable for you to play. And uh, normally I keep it somewhere around the 90, uh, a little abo above 90 degrees uh, angle. And I, uh, I pretty much play heel up, so it's all... the pressure the heel up and down so yeah all these things are there any other questions you want to shoot yeah Yes. Nice. Okay. Uh, so yeah, first of all, I've learned tabla for 10 years. And that has really helped me a lot when it comes to Indian music and playing with, uh, you know, uh, classical artists like, you know, sitar players, flute players. And when even with uh, somebody like a tabla player, if you, if you know the, uh, the exact, uh, what do you say? the language of tabla, then at least it's easier to kind of understand what they are playing and you are never lost, you know. And it's one of the uh, the most, uh, like there are drummers from abroad which are coming now to India to learn, you know, Indian uh, rhythms and stuff. And it's, uh, it's one of the best in the world, like, you know. So uh, I use a lot of, uh, especially with Bollywood music, I use a lot of, like when it comes to playing dola grooves and tabla grooves and stuff. So I use pretty much that language on, on drums and that has really helped me a lot. So uh, yeah, you actually don't have to incorporate the same language on, on the drums, but you can take uh, like uh, basic knowledge of rhythm and basic knowledge of, uh, um, what do you say? Like you can take any, any talam, like uh, if you, if you s s heard the second track, it had division of 11, division of nine. 
So sometimes I count it as takadimi takatakita as nine. I, I use a lot of Carnatic rhythms as well. So I sometimes count uh, all these rhythms into more and into Carnatic rhythms so that I can uh, remember it easily. So if you if you've heard the first uh, this the second piece that has uh, it is uh, the intro part is nine eleven nine seven. So I will count as takadimi takatakita takadimi takatakita. So I'll 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 basically incorporate it like that so I can remember it and you know I can play it in that particular way. So when it comes to odd time signatures, I use a lot of Carnatic rhythm to help me uh, my you know my stuff. And also I do a lot of uh, corner calls and uh, playing with the with the with the with the groove and uh I'll show you a small thing that of Carnatic rhythms that I use on drums and uh, Put it on drums like in in the, in that particular way, and uh, I see to it that I, I I do justice to the the bowls which are there. So you know I could have also played. That's the way I kind of incorporate, uh, you know, Carnatic rhythms, Indian rhythms on 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 this thing. But I don't want to exactly play the tabla as it is on the drums. But I use the knowledge of rhythm, the uh, you know, the 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 knowledge of all different talams, and uh, it really helps for odd time signatures. So, if you're learning tabla, that's that's an amazing thing. And uh, I'm happy that my dad taught me like you know tabla at that that time, and it really helps me today. Yeah. See, even if you don't play like a pro, it's okay. But till the time you can understand the knowledge of uh, the, you know, tabla, that is more important. The content which is there, you, you must have kaidas, you have relas, you have tihais. If you can understand the concept, how that tihai is made, you know, when you play a chakradar, it comes after three times you play that, it'll, co it'll come on one. So if you understand the the concept. It'll be really amazing for you to uh, to to apply that on drums. You don't have to be a, like a pro tabla player or you know, but if you learn basics of it and if you learn the talams, the basic kaida, the relas, the chakradas and stuff, it's really going to help you a lot on drums. Especially because you, we are we are in India and you know it's it's all about Indian music out here. So uh, if you can learn that, that's that's amazing. Yeah, we'll come back to you. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I did even on the second track. Uh, yeah, see, basically, th those are things that you'll have to. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Uh, see, if the basically the first track was pretty much a demonstration of all that because had that has a really lot of uh, odd time signatures happening on that because sometimes I'm playing six and then I'm playing uh, like a four group over the six and stuff like that and even the intro part that I was just showing uh, I, I was telling her that it starts uh, it's a it's a division of nine eleven nine seven and then it goes back to the the uh, nine so uh, those are basically things that you have to memorize. Uh, I've been lucky that I have been I've been very good with memory because I don't use chart music I don't uh, write anything on any of my songs if you've seen me on co concerts also I don't have any paper with me so uh, you need to obviously have a good memory to uh, if you if even if you don't have you can also kind of write it down and you know a lot of people write it and play 
I just feel that I get more, uh, a little distracted. You know, I want to give my all my energy and all my focus to to the music, and I want to remember all the parts in my head so that I'm not guessing anything on stage. So that's the thing. And uh, uh, coming back to your first questions, before the gig, what do I warm up? Uh, I yeah, see, uh, basic. Uh, uh, I pr pretty much carry my practice pad, uh, or I also do it on uh, in the hotel room in my on my pillow whenever I can. Uh, so. It's basically a division of all these things. I'll just show you that. Starting off with English folk group. <laughs> so I do inverted uh, doubles uh, to kind of just uh, you know get a swing of division of left and right. So I do. It's an exercise that Steve Smith has has showed me once. It uh, goes like this. for you there. So it, it gives you a nice warm up for, you know to to the left and the right hand both and you can also incorporate single stroke with that. It's it's like there are like a millions of those man. You can go online and you'll find like you know. Uh, I use the six stroke rolls actually, which uh, my my guru Ranjit Barot, uh, uh, you know, he's taught me and he he play he plays a lot of those uh, six strokes out here. So it goes like that. you guys want to left leg left leg i really had a, a a crazy time developing that because if you are righty your left is really weak and uh, i used to get like stick those shots from my <laughs> so on my left leg on my left leg because it's it's very weak. You need to really kind of keep practicing, practicing till till the time you get you know that thing. 
So first I used to never get the, the speed. If I want to play something over it, it was completely impossible. So just for like hours, even if you're watching TV or something at home, just keep a hi-hat and let it keep it going because your muscle needs to get used to that. And you know, after like five minutes, you will start getting pain, you know. But you have to go through that process, you know. You need to uh, keep playing, practice for hours to, you know, get that loose and, you know, happen. So that's it. Uh, anything if I'm, you know, even watching TV or on my computer, I can just just keep practicing so that the, the muscle is get used to it. And that's the only way to loosen it out and, you know, to get it that, to play at that speed. You know, that's the only way you can. Same thing with left hand. You know, my left hand was very weak when I started off. And it's only by playing for hours and hours, the same basic rudiments, you know, going with that. That's the way I'm building. Even when it comes to double pedal, actually, I've recently started playing double, ba uh, double bass. And uh, it takes a lot of time, you know. Uh, first of all, I don't play a music which uh, uh, has too much of double bass in it. But uh, I've started incorporating a little bit for fills and stuff uh, on, on, on songs, even on Bollywood songs and stuff. So, but yeah, it takes time. I'm still kind of working on it. I'm not as uh, fast as I want to be, but uh, I'm still like, you know, same thing I do, like, uh, you know, basic single strokes, double strokes, then the parallels. You can actually apply whatever you play with uh, hands exactly on legs. kind of working on all that but uh, it's going to take some time for me to uh, you know get uh, really good with that so see there are two uh, things which happen in that when i go to do a recording for say somebody like a shankar asan loy or amit trivedi or or even this day uh one thing is that something they have already have programmed like a basic drum loop from uh, from a software, and uh, they tell me that you know try to place something around that space, and uh, and then obviously then I will come up with fills and you know grooves and whatever I can come to close to that, and uh, and then there's somebody like Amit Trivedi who just keeps me open completely open. He's like, do what you <laughs> do you want to do? That's your song, and you know I really want you to kind of. He has his limits and stuff, but he gives me that much space to to play on on whatever I feel like, and then obviously you need to do justice to the song, and you know I don't want to overplay also where it kills the song, so uh, so he gives me more like space to work on when it comes to Coke Studio tracks that you've heard of him and all those things, but uh, when it comes with uh, playing with somebody like a Salim Suleiman, uh, I pretty much gig with them every day now, and uh, they are very particular about what they want. As because they are they are musicians themselves, so they have uh, very clear in their head that this is the groove that they want or this is the fill that they want. So I have to ex play exactly the same thing. You know, there's uh, there's not much space that I can do. Uh, obviously, the in that also I do my little bit whatever I can uh, give it back to the music. But they have a fixed thing which is there, and I have to exactly replicate that. So there are two times, two types of stuff which happens. Basically, I can do what I want to, and you know, put down my ideas. And sometimes they already have some idea. I just need to play it on on, on the kit. That's the way it works. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I actually, uh, I, I, I had this uh, teacher called Lester Godino. He had his own set of uh, books that uh, he, uh, he used to kind of follow. And uh, one thing was called Groove and, uh, Groove and I exactly don't remember the name. It was called Groove and some something. And uh, it had like a VCD also inside it and it like a couple of CDs, audio CDs as well. And, uh, so I'm, I've done I've done a little bit of notation work, uh, the you know reading stuff as well. But I didn't go too much deep into the the reading bit of it. I only stick to like mainly rudiments and you know just getting basic exercises from there and grooves, you know, different kinds of grooves, five four and you know seven and all those you know odd time signatures and stuff from there. But yeah, I was not too much into the reading part of it because I I found I found the practical knowledge too you know good. And uh, uh, also, I uh, luckily, thanks to Ranjit sir, I got to uh, hear a lot of music 
first actually till almost till the time I was 15, I was not listening to the right music. When I got uh, got to meet him and I went got to, to uh, spend time with him, uh, he had these two big folders of CDs in his studio, and I pretty much burned all the music down from his <laughs> place. Like you know, I had to copy every day. I just go to the studio and copy uh, albums of Billy Cobham, Tony Williams, Buddy Rich. Uh, Dave Weckl, you know, all these people that I, that time it was, you know, the YouTube was not there and all these things were not there. So we used to, you know, keep, uh, uh, basically burn CDs from him. So that really kind of opened uh, my vocabulary, you know, uh, till that time I was not that, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know exactly how a drum kit sounded, actually it should sound. And when I started listening to people like Tony Williams, uh, 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 Billy Cobham, I was like, whoa, like this is the way the, a drum should sound. You know, that's the way I want my tom to sound. That's the way I want my snare drum to sound. So it basically opened a completely different world for me. So listening to music is very, very important. Yes, notation, books, everything is, you know, is great for, you know, putting down exercise and stuff. But please listen to good music and listen to the real music, you know. Yes, there are Bollywood songs. There are all these which are very attractive and stuff like that. But you need to, hear, if you are a drummer, you need to hear the right music you know and uh, listen to albums of mahavishnu and mahavishnu orchestra and uh, even the recent albums that ranjit sir has played on and so there's a lot of material dave weckl has recently come out with a new album with osnoy and so just go on youtube type all these names you know there's so much material available to all of us now you know we are really lucky that you know it's it's within a uh, you know tap you can kind of get all these things at your thing Favorite rudiment? I think it should be double strokes. Yeah, I just love playing. I can play it for hours like that. So, yeah, I kind of enjoy that. Traditional grip, yeah. Not really, not really. Actually, both both grips are uh, are, are amazing. Both grips work for certain styles of music and stuff. Uh, I've never played traditional from day one, so uh, I never. You know, felt like going and playing that. I always played match grip, and uh, I always feel that I'm comfortable with that. But yeah, if you're playing traditional, it it works well, and you know there are a lot of molar techniques and stuff you can follow. That you know, Jojo Mayer does a lot. Steve Smith does a lot. You know, your uh, you know that the stuff that you can do with that. You know, and even people like Winnie Kaluta and stuff. They all they all play traditional grip. So it. it it's it's up to you what you're comfortable on. I've always been comfortable with match grip, so I've never felt like you know going. But still, this, uh, if I'm doing something like a like there was a groove in between, I I, I had to play for a session of Amit Trivedi, and then that was a very chilled out groove. So I kind of used it as I'll just show you a little bit. I do use it, but it, it it depends on the music and stuff. If I'm comfortable doing that, but I pretty much stick to uh, match grip. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Actually, that's uh, uh, that's obviously more of fusion music and. Uh, uh, then again, there is a lot of odd time signatures happening on that also. As well, you know, if you've heard the Bombay Project album, you know there's a thing in, yeah, there's a Ch Chennai Central which is there. So, yeah, the approach again, the same thing is like I have to uh, switch my style of playing. Like, it's not mo it's not pop rock stuff. So, uh, you know, I have to dynamically also control because I have to remember there's a flautist in the band, and it's his band. <laughs> so. Uh, I have to uh, keep the dynamics accordingly. So it's mainly dynamic wise, I have to play a little up and down on that. And uh, again, a lot of uh, Indian rhythms come into the into the picture because uh, as it's a you know an Indian instrument flaut. So I use a lot of uh, if you if you've heard the drum and bass track also on that, I use a lot of like you know 
uh, fills and stuff into you know more like Indian Indian kind of stuff and that. So yeah, it's it's a different thing where when it comes to uh, pop rock stuff, it's more you know it's hard hitting and it's you know more in the pocket playing. Yeah, you have a little space to play around and you know b do your bit. I get a little bit of solo to do and uh, yeah, it's it's fun playing with that. I actually miss playing with them because you know nowadays we don't gig that much. But uh, yeah, it's a it's it's good fun playing that. I had a great time recording that album. Yeah. बड़ो तो फिर खाली बरी का थोड़ा तो नहीं आई थिंक यू नीड टू मीट एंड प्रैक्टिस टुगेदर आई थिंक दैट्स डू है एंड उनको थोड़ा खाली बरी का भी समझा दो कहाँ कहाँ खाली होता है कहाँ बरी होता है तो थोड़ा अच्छा रहेगा उनको नहीं तो फिर भरी बरी का ही गाना ले लो वो बेटर पड़ेगा फिर खाली का आएगा इन्हें भरी भरी करते रहो आपसे दिदिंग ताक दिदिंग वो भरी भरी बजाते रहो सर खाली भरी का जरूरत नहीं है हम्म ओके यू मीन एक्सेंट या हम्म You have to be alert. That's what is more important. How many non-drum? Who plays guitars and keyboards out here? Okay. So first of all, that's that's what even I face uh, an issue when when I actually play fusion music and stuff. There are a lot of times we do you know uh, we do different accents and we try to you know go or sometimes go over the beat or you know end before the beat. You know keyboard and guitar players are the only people they they never they can never hold it somehow somehow down. Somehow I feel they are the time is very you know they they don't uh, practice I think on metronome or they are not used to uh, you know people playing off or something like that. So oh, I also recommend you to that you also have to learn a lot of about time. He can play whatever he wants. He can accent the way he wants to. Obviously uh, you know the, it it should suit the music though, but it doesn't mean that you can go off. You have to hold down the time, whether it's the bass player or the keyboard player or the guitar player. You guys have to also hold that hold the time. You know sometimes. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The traditional and the match group. Yeah. Okay. Correct. See, both are both are uh, good, uh, equally good. Like you know, it's not like uh, you know. Or, or there are a lot of drummers also, like the greats who who never use traditional grip. If you see Dennis Chambers and all, they are all pretty much into match grip. So both both styles are good. You need to s figure out what is good for you. You know what what makes you comfortable. At the end of the day, you are going to be playing the drum kit, and you 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 know you are doing your music. So you need to be completely comfortable on what you play. So if you feel that the traditional grip is really working for you, whether it comes to bounce and stuff, please go for that. Like you know, uh, for me always the the match grip kind of worked well, so I kind of stick to that. So it actually depends from person to person. If you really feel comfortable, you should be completely comfortable by playing the drums. And uh, the bounce, as I told you, is very important. So uh, both are great, but you uh, the traditional grip is very uh, um, what do you say? It's uh, it's tough. To to build that, so if you're ready to put that much time into that, then you know uh, you should stick to traditional, but as well as match. Also, ha you have to put that much effort, but still the technique is still much more uh, simple, and uh, I feel this the the traditional is a little more little more complicated when it comes to that. So it's up to you, but I have I prefer uh, match grip, so that's the way. Yeah. You can try both of them. Try both of them. Try uh, you know put like. Put your all your basic rudiments down one day, and you know play in both the uh, both the grip. 
and see which kind kinds of you feel com more comfortable and something that you can push at a at a decent speed when it comes to you know playing at 150 bpm 160 bpm can you push with the traditional grip do you have that much power you know that so yeah so yeah How do match fills on? Uh, you can put, see I basically, even on my, all my fills and stuff, it's mainly basic rudimentary which I use. And uh, I just see that obviously you are, if, you, if I'm playing a seven, I'll see to it that whatever I do ends, ends after, it comes back on one. So uh, I'll show you something in five maybe, maybe you can get an idea on that. <laughs> 